So here's the funny thing. So growing up, my mum used to always say, oh, we're having so-and-so over for a drink and a nut. Yeah, you heard me, a drink and a nut. So when we published our last cookbook, The Monday Morning Cooking Club, Now for Something Sweet, we've got one savoury chapter in it and we called it A Drink and a Nut. And it's honouring my mum and her drink and nuts and honouring my dad, who was the one who used to make the roasted almonds that they served when they had friends for a drink and a nut. Now, what do you call it when you have friends over for a drink? I think I'm gonna upgrade the drink and a nut and go drink and a snack. So come to my place now for a drink and a snack and I'm gonna tell you my favourite three. One, a nut of any type. Two, a raw fish, tartare, a ceviche, carpaccio, something like that. And finally, which I always love, is either a pastry bought from your local patisserie or something you've whipped up in the freezer, ready to cook as soon as your friends walk in. And we're gonna start with the nuts. If you wanna keep it simple, nothing beats roasted, salted pistachios in the shell, but let's take it one step further with caramelized spicy nuts. So first we've got equal quantities of my favorite three nuts, cashews, almonds and peanuts into a heat proof bowl. We're gonna make a caramel with the sugar and the water. We'll stir it over heat till the sugar dissolves and then let it simmer till it goes brown. Then we're gonna add butter and sriracha, carefully, cause it will spit, and stir that until it's well combined. Then I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm gonna add the salt and the baking soda till it froths up. I'm pouring the spicy caramel over the nuts and mixing it well and tipping them onto a lined baking tray. I'm just spreading these out so they're in one layer. The spicy sweet smell of this is just too much. My mouth is watering like mad. I can't wait to dig into these. I'm gonna set the timer for 30 minutes and have a look. Now to the raw fish. This is a dish that you can whip up so easily Grab your fish on the way home, pick up a bunch of chives and fennel and everything else you've hopefully got in the pantry. This is my salmon carpaccio that's gonna take you to summer in Italy. I find it easiest to go to the fish markets or your local fishmonger and ask them to give you some sashimi, salmon or tuna, and then put it all out on a platter just like this. And now we're gonna start with all the added goodness. Starting with some anchovies, which I'm just gonna mush up with a fork. Anchovies add a really great flavour and this level of saltiness that you just need. And if you don't love anchovies, you won't even notice they're there. Don't leave them out. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over. Now some baby capers or big capers chopped up, as you wish, sprinkle on top. I've got some fennel. I did it in the food processor or do it on a mandolin, really finely shaved, tossed with some lemon juice and olive oil. Fresh chives or use a sliced eschalot, either works really well. Bit of lemon juice. If you want to make this dish ahead, just don't do the lemon juice part till the very end. And some olive oil, don't be shy. I'm going to add some freshly ground black pepper. And a little bit of the, um, <laughs> I don't usually like these, but on this they look really good. They're the fronds from the top of the fennel. And if you've already chucked them out, don't worry about it, just skip it. But they do look nice. And that is it. Super easy. Serve it with golden, super crunchy toast. My third favourite snack is, of course, a pastry. And if you want to go all out, make it from scratch. Make the pastry, have them ready in the freezer. Friends walk in, pop the pastries in, and they're ready in 20 minutes. This recipe is from this book that I spoke about earlier, Now for Something Sweet in the Savoury chapter. And it uses one of my favourite all-time pastries, a sour cream pastry from Marika Brugman back in the day. You can read all about it in the book three ingredients in this pastry, flour, unsalted butter and sour cream. Putting the flour into my food processor and my butter. I'm trying to get it to like a breadcrumb consistency. Once it's there, I'm gonna throw in the sour cream. I know people are really afraid of making pastry, but I urge you to try it, because once you do it, you'll never look back. Quick knead on the bench, just to make it smooth. Pat it out into a disc, wrap it up, and let it rest in the fridge for about 30 minutes. And then you're ready to roll. So the pastry's now been resting for half an hour, and I'm ready to roll it out. Cut it in half, flour your bench, 
I may need to roll it into a large rectangle. I'm really feeling the pressure here because it looks nothing like a rectangle and I'm standing here thinking, how the hell am I gonna make this into a rectangle? But you know what, let's have faith, okay? I think it's gonna happen. This is the most beautiful, beautiful dough to work with. You can see, no tricks here, just a really supple, soft dough that rolls out like a dream. Okay, that's good enough. It's almost a rectangle. So I've got half my pastry and I've got my favorite anchovies. I'm going to cut this in half. Now I'm going to take my little anchovies and I'm going to lay them like this, side by side. Just leave a little gap in between. Concentrating really hard here to make them look perfectly lined up so that you'll see how easy it is to roll these little babies. And then I'm going to take this bottom half and I'm going to gently lay it on top and just join them in between, like seal them in between each anchovy. And I'm just going to take my knife and cut right in the middle. So you can see I've got nice little parcels of pastry, anchovy pastry, and now we need to make twists. So with lightly floured hands, if you need to, twist it like that and seal it shut and put it on your tray. And that's it. I can hear you all sitting there saying, I can do that. Like you really can. And it looks so impressive and it's quite simple. The beauty of these is that you can put them on the tray, pop this tray as is into the freezer, and once they freeze solid, put them into a snap lock bag. And then next time people pop in, they're ready to bake. It's unreal. Into the oven, 20 minutes. If you're a martini drinker, it's really good to know how to make it at home. So I'm making my favorite an extra dirty vodka martini, and the dirty just means it's got olive brine. So start with your cocktail pitcher, half full of ice. I'm gonna add a nip of the vermouth. Give it a little stir. And discard. So what we've pretty much done is coat the ice in the vermouth. Next, I'm gonna add some vodka, one nip of olive brine, to stir. Let it sit for a minute. Stir. Let it sit for a minute. You've got to get that perfect point of dilution. Next, got my martini glass chilling. Tip the ice out. My glass is lovely and cold. Already looks really good. The color is perfect from the olive brine. Three olives. It's got to be three, that lucky number. And that's my absolute favorite extra dirty vodka martini. So here are my favorite drinks and snacks, extra dirty vodka martini, spicy caramelized nuts, salmon carpaccio, and anchovy twists. And I think I can hear my favorite drinking partner just arriving home. <gasps> well, hello you. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. All right, you're a bit, bit peckish. Ready I to sample? I would love. I was about to tell you what to start with, but you just <laughs> dive on in. So what I love about these is they're so golden and crunchy, spicy, not too sweet. What do you think? Perfect for alcohol. Salmon carpaccio, perfect with toast or crackers. Salivating. Mm. Mm. So good. The crunchiness of the toast is such a good pairing with this slightly oily salmon. The lemon and the acidity of the fennel, the freshness of the chives, the saltiness of the capers and the anchovies. It's just a good combo, isn't it? Perfect. You haven't had these for ages. They're really one of my favorites. Tell me what you think. Yum. The pastry is extraordinary. The buttery, slightly flaky pastry with that salty, anchovy inside is such a good combo. It's really a winner. And remember, you can bake it straight from the freezer. Mm. Got to finish that. Thanks. <laughs> so this is the final episode of the first season of Walking Up an Appetite. And what a ball I've had walking through Greater Sydney in search of deliciousness. And it has indeed been so bloody delicious. Please remember if you've missed any episodes, go back to the channel and check them all out. There's 10 in total. Like, subscribe, and tell me where you want me to walk next. Thank you to all of you for walking up an appetite with me. Remember, there's got to be joy in the journey and deliciousness in the destination. Cheers. <laughs>